What is going on? Welcome to episode three of our little mini series on navigation inside of our larger React series. So the previous two videos we set up routing so our navigation bar works. We can click on these different pages, but there's a few problems. The first one being that the background does not switch over to the active page and that's what we're gonna fix in this video. And the second problem, which really isn't that big of a deal, it works, is that we're using an anchor tag and there are better React components that we can use for links. So we're going to replace that in this video. Now, there is some kind of system here for defining which link is active and it comes from this value here, current being true. I'm not really sure how they intend for you to use this, maybe keeping track of some state on your own, but I'm actually not going to worry about it because the way we're gonna do it is actually, in my opinion, a little bit better. So what we can do is we can remove all this junk if you've been following along, or if you're just jumping in this video from a YouTube search or a Google search, well then, you might not even have that and you won't need to worry about it. You just have to keep your links and we're going to show you how to update them. This one's doing it in a loop, but if you're just hard coding each link out, you'll just need to make the change across all of them. So the first change I wanna do is change this anchor tag from an anchor tag to a nav link. And this actually has the active capability built into it. So this is going to come from React Router DOM, which we've used in the previous episode. So we'll say import nav link from React Router DOM. Now before we delete this, there's a good chance we'll need some of these classes later. So for now, let's just leave that there and we'll create a new one class name here and this is going to have some of our own functionality. And this is actually going to be an arrow function. Now, navlink is going to pass in the active link for us automatically. So we'll say is active, and it actually passes an object. So we want to destructure this object, which is going to get us the attribute on that object called is active, and that is the value we want. So a little confusing, but that is the syntax you're going to need. Curly braces and then parentheses around the curly braces. This is going to be true or false if it's the active URL. So inside of here, we should be able to say console log and let's go ahead and say the href of the item. So item.href plus a space plus is active. So this will give us an idea of what we're working with. And the nav link is actually going to use the to prop to contain the URL the link should point to. So make sure you update that or you'll get an error in the console. And now let's just take a look at the URLs and what we should expect. So we have slash employees, slash customers, and these are pound signs which will just refer to the same page. So we'll get multiple trues at once. So let's just change this to something other and then slash other two just as an example. So we'll save that. Now let's take a look back down at our code. The other thing is we're not going to need this line here so we will delete that. It's white and this actually is important because you might see this when you're doing this. So if you see something like use location may be used only in the context of a router, this means that you're not currently within a router or browser router. So you need to make sure you have this. And you might be like, what? Well, we do have it. Why isn't it working? Well, our header is defined outside of that browser router, which was probably just a structural mistake on my part. So we'll just switch those so that the header is on the inside, save it, and we should be good to go. At this point, our site shows up and we have the different links. They just don't look very nice. So you can click one of these and you can see information popping up in the console. If you want a fresh start, you can do a refresh and take a look at these white ones here. Employees, true. And then all the other links are false. Customers is false, other is false, and other two is false. So you have that functionality there to check if this is true. And if it is, style it a bit differently. If it's false, style it some other way. So now this is where our other classes come in. So we can go back to the header. And we can use some of these. So the way this turn area is structured, these are shared classes. So what we can do is apply them here and paste this here. We'll say return, put this in a string, and then we will just say plus. And now we can do a turn area to see which one of these we want to grab based on the value of is active. So the way we're gonna do that is actually with parentheses, not curly braces, because we're already within a code block. And we can say is active. If it is active, then we will grab 
this one, and the no underline is actually on both of them, so I'm going to add those to both. No underline with a space because we're doing some concatenation here. So I'll paste this value here. Otherwise, I'm going to paste this value here. All right, so we'll save that, take a look. Ah, it's working, except we got it backwards. So I wasn't sure which one was which. Let's just switch this is active, or you could switch down around the classes. Either one would work fine. So right now, only the active one is going to have that background. And if we switch to customers, you can see it maintains that background. So just a quick review. We use a nav link. We use a two to point to the URL. Then we returned a list of classes and we were able to condition on the is active variable, which we got right here as a parameter, destructured with the curly braces. You can look into that if you want to know more. Concatenated with stuff that should be displayed if is active is currently false because we inverted it, and then if it's true. And there you go, that is how you maintain which URLs are active, and you don't have to do anything with managing state or really anything too complicated. It's all built in with that nav link, so that's what I recommend using. And then throughout your pages, you will want to use the link component whenever you have a link instead of a plain anchor tag. We might get into that later, but so far we haven't had any direct links in our page, but you can do some extra research on that if you're interested, or you can just continue on with the series with the next video. Reminder, playlist link down below, and I 